Good morning, YouTubers and students, uh, or maybe afternoon or evening where you are. But it's morning here, so good morning, YouTubers and students. Today, we're going to uh, do more or less a part two of our previous video. Uh, the previous video, if you remember, um, was finding the future value of a dollar. Um, and if, if you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to see that video before this video. This video is going to build upon that one by incorporating different uh, frequencies of compounding interest. A brief word about compounding interest. Um, <clears throat> compounding interest arises when the interest that is added to the principal um, becomes interest-bearing funds. In other words, when you have a principal um, in, a, in an account and it gains interest, that interest is tacked on to the principal, so then that interest becomes part of the principal, so then the principal plus the interest gains more interest. Anyway, um, I have several examples here. The first example, which was in the previous video, was annual compounding. Uh, it's just what it sounds like. Uh, compounding periods one per year. So after every year the 10% of the 4,000 in this particular example 10% uh, of 4,000 is tacked onto the principal and then that becomes interest-bearing funds. Next, uh, so the first thing what we're going to talk about today is semi-annual compounding where you have two um, compounding periods a year then quarterly four a year and then monthly 12 so uh, we're going to figure out what all of the future values are for non-annual compounding uh, periods and we're also going to figure out the effective interest rate um, when you have non-annual compounding your effective annual interest rate will change and we'll go through all of that uh, in the next couple of minutes through all of this video, I'm going to show you um, <clears throat> the, the long way and the short way how to do all of these different compoundings. Um, and remember in the last video when I said not to hard code in all of these figures into your formula builder? Well, now it's going to come in handy. So let's go ahead and get started with semi-annual. So semi-annual compounding. Um, Mac users go up to formulas, PC users you, you'll have a formulas tab up here too. Uh, Mac users click insert go down to financial and go to FV. Again we we did this in detail in the previous video if you haven't seen it please check it out. Um, PC users you can just click the financial up here and scroll down to FV. Mac users click formula builder now we're going to do the same type of thing what we did the other time. Uh, the rate is going to be 10%, mPer is 5, uh, there is no payments but still click on the payment there. PV is negative 4,000, it's negative because it's cash outflow. Now <clears throat> here comes the alterations because we're going to do semi-annual compounding. When we do non-annual compounding, uh, whether it be semi-annual, quarter, monthly, or even daily, you have to change two of the givens here, the rate and the number of periods. So for rate, click on rate here, and it says B3. Now the B3, we go here, that is our 10%. That's the rate of the entire year. So if we're going to compound it twice a year, we're going to divide our rate by two. So B3, I'm going to hard in, uh, hard code in, divided by two. Okay. Now our number of periods, since we cut our rate in half, we have to compensate for that. So the number of periods, watch this. We have five annual periods. What is that in semi-annual terms? Well, five years equals ten half years, right? So B2, I'm going to hard code in times 2. Okay, everyone see that? Leave your payment alone, leave your present value alone, click enter, and that'll bring up the semi annual compounding. 
Alrighty, now click out of Formula Builder. Now we're going to um, continue on for quarterly. So same type deal, insert financial FV, okay? Formula Builder, again, PC users, the Formula Builder will automatically show up. Rate, 10%, and per is five, payment is zero, PV is negative 4,000. Type, you can leave that alone because our uh, we don't have a payment to, to make. Okay, now, since this is quarterly, we, we, we have to divide and multiply by a factor of four. There are four quarters in a year. So our rate, uh, our, our rate is 10% a year, so rate is B3 divided by, I'm gonna click here for four, okay? Now, remember on semi-annual, we have to do the same type thing for quarterly, so we have to compensate. So if we divided our rate by four, how many quarters are in a year? Four. Five years, five times four is 20. But, so we're gonna do B2 times four, okay? Which is the D8 cell in this particular instance. We have all those, we changed our rate and our number of periods, click enter. There it is. Um, this is going to be your future value assuming quarterly compounding. Click out of Formula Builder. Now, uh, lastly, let's do the monthly compounding. So, say insert financial FV, okay, Formula Builder. Let's, let's see if I can do it without talking. <laughs> Rate, oh, well, there, I, there I went. Okay, do I have that right? I think I do. But now, with our rate, now we're dealing in months now, so it's a factor of 12, 12 months in a year. So if our rate is 10% a year, we have to do B3 divided by, click the cell, 12, okay? Number of periods, um, number of periods here is five years, but again, it's months, five times 12, so B2 times, Click the cell 12, and there you go. It automatically computes it for you. No payment, PV stays the same. Click enter, and there it is. So that's the, that is the long way to figure out all these different compounding methods. Now, forgive me, I'm going to, I'm going to click and delete all of these cells so we can do it the easy way now. You ready? All right, click and delete, boom, now. How do we do it the easy way? Well, check this out. I click on my annual compounding here, right? It gives me all my givens and my formula builder up here. What I wanna do now is um, put all of these as a reference group, okay? So I am going to, for, for Mac, I can, I can easily click the switch reference group here. And I believe it's the same for, oh, I gotta highlight it first. I believe it's the same for um, PC users as well, but if not, put a dollar sign in front of the letter and the number of the corresponding cells. So dollar sign B, dollar sign three, comma, dollar sign B, dollar sign two, comma, etc. Okay? Click enter on that, it shouldn't change a thing. So we have that there. Now, copy and paste this whole thing, okay? Okay, so we have this copied and pasted, now, well, I'm sorry, we have it copied. Now let's paste it here. So we have the same, same givens here with our dollar signs, remember? Now semi-annual compounding, so we click up here to our formula and it'll give us the breakdown. Rate, in per, payment, PV, and type. Now, what are the two things that we have to change for non-annual compounding? Rate and number of periods. So this, our, our first field here is our rate and what do we do with it? We divide it by the number of periods. So I'm gonna click divided by, and I'm just gonna click over here to compounding periods two, because there's two semi-annual compounding periods in a year. Click two, or I should, I should say the D7 cell. Now for our number of periods, which is B, uh, dollar sign B, dollar sign two, go here. Remember, we have to times it by the period now. So 
times by the same 2, D7, okay? Don't put dollar signs on the D7s. Now, we and the rest of the formula is correct, so I'm going to hit enter. And if you remember, uh, this is the same future value as how we did it the, the long way with our uh, formula builder. Now, here's where it gets easy. We have the semi-annual compounding. Watch this. I'm going to click and drag this down. And there's my answer for quarterly and monthly. Um, what this does is because we have a constant reference group of the dollar sign B, dollar sign 3, see B3, the, the, the reference group with the dollar sign means that these cells never change when you pull uh, the function down like this. However, what does change is the fields without the dollar signs or the non-referent group uh, fields. So the D7, which is right here, when I pull it down, right here, right? When I pull this down, D7 becomes D8. Watch. You see? D7 becomes D8. So now I'm dealing with quarterly compounding 4. Same thing with monthly. D7 became D8, now becomes D9. 4. I'm sorry, 12. <laughs> there are 12 months in a year, um, most of the time. Now, uh, since we have our non-annual compounding for future value over here, let's compute the effective interest rate. Now, uh, go to Mac users, go to Insert, Financial, PC users, just click on Financial. Now click on Effect, okay? Effect. Formula Builder, bring up your Formula Builder. Uh, PC users, it'll come up automatically. You have two fields to enter in, your nominal rate and your uh, number of periods per year. <clears throat> well, we have our, no, uh, we have our uh, nominal rate of 10%, okay? Now our number of periods per year is right here, compounding periods. So there, for annual compounding, it's one per year. We have that, click enter, okay? Now, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm just going to skip to the easy way, get out of the formula builder. I'm going to make sure I have my B3 with, is my reverent group, so B3. And D6, I want to change as I click down, so I'm not going to put dollar signs up here. Go ahead and click enter. Okay, it doesn't change a thing. Uh, but if I wanted to, I can make that into a percentage right there. Okay. Everyone see that? I went home, I clicked on the percent sign. If I want to add decimals to it, I can do that. Let's go ahead and add three decimal points. Now what I do, click and drag all the way down. So while yes, uh, the compounding interest per year is 10%, when I compound it semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly, my effective interest, my effective annual interest rate goes up because of that interest bearing um, interest that is tacked onto the principal. Uh, so there you have it. Now uh, since I have all of this stuff hard coded in, I can then go up here to my givens and change my givens without having to reload all of these formulas. So I can change my number of periods to 10, everything will go up. I can uh, change my interest rate to 8, let's say. Everything changes. I can change what I, um, what my present, what I invest. I can now invest, I don't know, negative $7,000 as a cash outflow. So you see that? Um, so there you go. That is non-annual compounding for, to, to find a future value with non-annual compounding and to find the effective interest rate given your uh, annualized nominal interest rate and the number of compounding periods a year. So uh, thank you so much for the video and uh, there will be more to come.